Hey, hey guys and girls. Well, I've, um, yeah, as you know, Project Bex, uh, 4x4 Sizzly Blue, 4x4 Sizzly is, um, was deemed too bad to repair. Uh, too much to, you know, too extensive uh, rust, excessive rust, corrosion levels were through the roof, so it's been abused a little bit. You know, check out the other video where, where um, we purposely make uh, make it fall off the jack to see how good the sills hold up to a uh, single jacking point. Um, so yeah, keep out, keep a look out on that one. But uh, yeah, I've managed to pull one of the drive shafts out with all the suspension, lower wishbones and whatnot. Ball joint on this side is pretty good nick, so that's that's good. So on the forum it was replaced a couple, only a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I have made a trolley to take the engine out with. Uh, hopefully the, my idea is that the car is going to be lifted up and the engine is going to be sat on that. Hopefully it's just going to come, you know, the, the, the body will lift up. The car is pretty bad actually. Um, yeah, windscreen's still in, I've got to take that out. But um, everything is pretty much off it so far. Steering rack is half on, half off. Um, I've got to just undo um, some stuff under here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, six bolts on that, yeah. And that should undo that. And then all of that will drop down. I've already undone the strut top, so that's good. Um, oh sh yeah, six bolts, seven, eight bolts. I can actually do with giving that a bit of a spray. Try and get the oil to seep down into it. I'll do, not worried about getting oil on the brakes. So much lip, the lip just does chip off. There you go, like that. <laughs> the lips that uh, corroded, the lip just chips away. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next job on this is to take the sump guard off. Sorry, I haven't been doing a video log on the thing. Yeah, I say the interior is all out, and that's all been taken out. Uh, steering column is all out. Uh, steering rack is still in high half, like I said. Uh, other than that, it's basically it. Pedal box is all out. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't take much to disassemble a panda. Uh, you'd be surprised. When the windscreen's out, I'm going to cut this out because this is in pretty good nick. There's slight bits of rust there, corrosion. Won't mean anything. I'm going to cut this out and on the other side and have that lift that out because that's too good to throw away. That's why all Fiat Pandas go rusty. This one hasn't, which is bizarre. But then again, so wasn't that one over there. It started to go rusty. Funny enough, in the same place, you can just see. And I very badly hammer it. Um, it yeah, it's going in the same place. Just there. But the rest of the screen is still in good condition. So, yeah. Yes, right, what else? Oh, I don't know. I've got to pull all these pipes out. Put all these pipes through. So while I'm down there, hopefully I can get access to the speedo cable, because uh, I couldn't undo it with my brute force! As my brother likes to call it, ape strength. Because apparently that's what I'm referred to around here, the ape. To be fair, they won't be far off. I mean, hygiene wise and everything. <laughs> no, I'm not that bad, guys. Yeah. Wash my hair every night. That just shows how bad my hygiene is. Even though I've got long hair, I still wash it every night. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, manifold's off, hanging down. Next job to do is take this uh, sump guard off, so that's what I'm going to do. I am on the jack this side. I've run out of bleeding axle stands. I've got one on the rear end and I've got one on the... Um, one on here, so it's hydraulic jack I'm afraid, uh, not the safest thing in the world to do but under the car I've got a, uh, it is sitting on a load of tyres so 
you know, the rims. So if it drops, it's only going to drop an inch, if that, onto the rims. But uh, I don't think this jack will fail. It's a brand new jack, for crying out loud. Well, it was brand new a couple of years back. <coughs> it's in good condition. Not like it's an ancient thing. Anyway, need to get on with it. Like I say, that was the old leaf blower thing with Jingy. Hoover a sucker upper a jobby. And I've just swallowed it together and made a nice platform. So hopefully the gearbox and the engine will sit on that when it all comes out. We can only hope. Anyway guys and girls, I'll uh, crack on with this. Alright guys and girls. Now I'm just in the stage where I'm prepping to drop the engine. Now the Fiat Panda it has three engine mount positions. You've got the one here, you've got the one there, and you've got one just down here. It's on the back of the engine, on the back of the gearbox, sorry. Get down and show ya! Alright, there you go. It's right there. Look. That thing right there. Now, there's two ways I could drop this. One way is to undo that nut there. The other way is to undo those two nuts there. And that way is the way I'm going to do it. By undoing those two. Um, yeah, you can see how where all the oil was leaking out of this. It was leaking out the CV boot. It was dripping out because it was only held on with a, uh, a zip tie. Not very secure either. It's dripped all out of here. And the oil level is up to here in the gearbox. Just up to there, and honestly, that's probably the gearbox all I put in the thing because I didn't put much in it, only just enough. Uh, so, yeah, I think the box was totally out of oil. If it had been driven, been driving around like that, then the gearbox is not going to be in the best of conditions. But we'll see, we will see. Okay, dokie, okay, guys and girls. Uh, stay tuned. Hi, right, guys and girls. There we go. One engine almost removed. It's not connected to the car anymore, and it's free from the car, so you can you can just wheel it out. It's just not got any space. But uh, yeah, one man, if he's very strong, can actually lift the whole front end of a Panda up after undoing the engine mount and letting the engine come out the bottom on a bit of a trolley but you do need someone else to pull the trolley out of the way so you can rest it back down on the jack again because it's a bit heavy duty mm. yeah, me and my brother just managed it, my brother pulled it out and the bloody gear linkages, if you're going to do this job make sure you take the gear linkages off the bloody <laughs> thingy side because the whole car weight was on the 4x4 linkage the one that turns the 4x4 on off and it has snapped it, which I'm not too fussed about but you couldn't write that, could you? You really couldn't write it. And it, the first time round, it got stuck on the trolley. It yeah. Me from pulling it out. It got stuck on the bloody trolley. <laughs> Whatever. Engine removed. All right. When the trolley's free, we're going to rest the front of the car on the on the trolley, so we can still move it. The back end. Oh, I don't know. Trouble is, the front end could could well the back end could do with being rested on the trolley because the. Uh, the back end's the heavier end. The front end's really light. Oh well. Engine removed. Now it's got to unbolt the rest of the engine mounts. So I'm keeping those as well. Like I say everything on this car is being kept. If it can be unbolted, it's being unbolted. <coughs> I mean, let's see what condition the gearbox is in as well. Our little trolley worked well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Alright guys and girls, thanks for watching. Okay guys and girls, well, it's getting dark now. See, it's a nice sky. And, uh, awesome torch. It's a cool little thing. Uh, yeah, the trolley's working good. Uh, it survived the weight of the engine in the box, so it's not alright. It's bent it a bit, but I mean, it was to be expected. And I actually wanted it to, to bend and flex, so that it uh, wasn't too hard on the sump. But it worked well. 
and now it's holding the front of the car up. Um, I'll leave the tools in, sod it. Took the carburetor off the engine because uh, the grey panda needs a carby. Well, it doesn't, the grey panda's carburetor works fine, it's just um, it's got some weird uh, uh, throttle system on it. Oh no, it didn't, sorry, this had the good throttle on it, the same throttle as what this has got on it. So I probably didn't even need to take the. Oh, I did, yeah, because I took all the bits off, so whatever, I'll swap the carbs over, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, yeah, tomorrow I will tackle, my brother said he wants the wheels for his Marbella, which I'm keeping them anyway. They've got better tyres on them, so he wants those. Um, tomorrow, tank's off as well. The fuel tank has some terrible fuel in it, but it was open to atmosphere for ages, so... I'm guessing all the... Uh, all the fuel, whatever needed to be in the fuel, evaporated off. So it's just the, the remaining fluid that's in the in the tank, liquid, whatever it is, is just going to be used for degreasant purposes. Nice and easy. Uh, yeah. Oh, take the indicators out. Um, there's a lot of things I can't get to yet because of that's because the car's butted up to the wall. Uh, I need to take this glass out, so I'll do that at some point in time, tomorrow probably. Um, bus sounds happy. <coughs> uh, yeah, the door hinge was was knackered. In fact, there it is. What remains of the door hinge? Ouch. Uh, it actually snapped. You can see just here, guys. Look, just there. Yeah, it managed to snap it off. So that's no good for anything. That can go with the car. <coughs> in fact, I may keep it and wait in myself. Get more, get more money for it that way. <laughs> Every penny counts. Um, windscreen, I'm slowly taking the windscreen out. I've taken the top rubber off. As you can see, guys, here, look. That's how you take the windscreen out of a Fiat Panda. You just slowly keep kneading it round, hooking the lip underneath the, the thing, start in the middle, keep doing it round and round until the windscreen pretty much fully comes out, and then easy enough to do, you just, uh, when the screen is out, it just pops out a little bit. You don't have to force it or anything, it does it itself. And you can just pull the windscreen upwards. And it slides up up and out, nice nice and easy. I've not smashed one yet, and mine's been out on my car twice now. I wants to repair some stuff, and then once again to flip it over because there was a stone chip right in my view, so... <laughs> Best thing about flat windscreens, you just flip them over. <laughs> yeah, can't get the bloody... Uh, thingy out of it, the uh, washer jet nozzle thing. I need to try, it's only a single one though, so I'm not really that fast. I prefer the double ones myself. Um, yeah, some other panda bits lying around the engine bay. <coughs> yes! The roof rack needs to come off. Um, what else? That's about it guys and girls. The only things I've got to do now is remove um, one gear linkage lever. Handbrake's got to come out. The rear axle's got to come off. The rear shocks have got to come off. And the handbrake cable. And the bumper. Basically things from that side of the car that I can't get access to from this side. So, bumper. Uh, door. And light. This is just over there. Boot hatch will be coming off as well. I'll take that off. And we should be left with just an empty shell after that. 
I'd like to flip the car over on its side just to um oh and the roof line, can't forget the roof lining and the grab handles from inside. But yeah, I'd like to flip the car over just to see if there's anything underneath it I can take off, like the fuel lines, I'll 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 keep those. Uh that is about it I think. Yeah, I managed to snap the uh 4x4 linkage lever when I took the engine out because I lifted the car up by hand might I add, just me lifting the front of the car up yes it's doable, these cars are that lightweight uh, my brother, the engine dropped out on the trolley um, and yeah my brother pulled the trolley out and I lowered the car back down but the car wouldn't go all the way down I was like why not and it was resting on the gear linkage so I jack it up on the jack and then just hammer the gear linkage out. I'm not fussed if I braked it, if, if I braked, oh, my, my good English, if I broke it. So I just hammered it out and it snapped sadly, but oh well, life goes on. I'm not that fussed about it. Handbrake cable is split like hell. I, I'll have to, uh, when I take it out, I'll have a look see how good it is put a load of grease around it and then put some a couple of uh, layers of heat shrink around it to try and uh, you know stop it from rusting through all grips are still under there oops I'm holding the camera sideways yeah that's about it guys and girls Whew, I'm quite hot I'm actually sat here with no t-shirt on at the moment I'm not sure what the temperature is out here uh, says it's about 20, 20 degrees. So yes, there you go, guys and girls. Whew, dear me! Can't wait till I start work on project Fallout. I really can't. It's going to be a fun project, that is. It's going to be so fun. But I've got planned for this. Some people are going to hate it, and some people are going to love it. Keep in mind the car is rough as it is anyway, there's dints in it, there's scratches in it and all sorts, there's a lot of dints in the thing. So it's a roughy tufty car and it's it's gonna look a lot more roughy tufty when I'm when I've done with it. It's not gonna be modified or anything well it will be, but it's not gonna be boy raced or rat looked or anything like well, rat looks, yeah. Scrap looks maybe. Post apocalyptic looked. But yeah. Shocks need replacing on it. Say it looks like the springs aren't that old. But oh, the shocks are the shocks are knackered. Yeah, I'll just take them off this car. This has got newish shocks on them. Loads of spares. Good stuff. Alright guys and girls, I've talked enough. I'll catch you all later and uh, you all keep safe. Yeah. Peace out.